You know what this club means to me and what I wanted to achieve here for the club, for the fans, for the players, for the staff. I wanted us to take the next step to challenge for the league, to win trophies and I only think it's right that it comes from the horse's mouth. I don't want to answer all. There's going to be journalists asking me about interviews but no, I'm not going to do any interviews. I want to get it out there. I'm going to leave by the front door because I think everyone knows I've given everything for this club. We're talking of course about uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the ex-manager now of Manchester United. That's our top story of the day. Uh, on a day when actually we're talking about multiple coaches. That's the common theme of our show yeah. today. You're watching Play Things of Alien Forces with Leslie Xavier and myself, Siddhant Dhani on News Click. Uh, our weekly show where we talk about some of the most interesting sports stories of the week. And we're leading off today with Manchester United and their firing of their manager. The 1999 Champions League uh, winning goal scoring legend. Hero. Hero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who spent what, three years at the club? Yeah. Yes, in 2018 he joined us. This man. For those of us who don't very much enjoy Manchester United successes, it's not such a bad day, Leslie. <laughs> I'm just uh, wearing, you know, removing my neutral mask and, <laughs> said, <yeah. laughs> and then putting it back on. But uh, Manchester United doing well is good for football. It's important for football also in, in many ways because uh, when I look back at when European football started infiltrating into the Indian psyche, 90s when cable came in and all those live matches started happening, Manchester were, were on the ascent and the Ferguson era and so many of the people I know who became football fans became Manchester United fans yeah. to start with. And uh, so the popularity of the European game in India in this, uh, from that generation onwards to the current generation, Manchester United has played a big, big part in it. Mm. Something like uh, like how the Italian clubs did in the 80s in in areas where those matches were coming in. I'm talking specifically about Middle East, mm. where some of my relatives were based. So my uncles and all would come back from there and they would come back with Italian jerseys and they would also talk about Italian score, goal, goal scoring. And sometimes when they play locally with us, they will score a curler and they would talk about that. So uh, these clubs, no matter how distant, we have had this discussion previously also saying that what do you mean? You don't understand how these clubs are. You are far away from there. So what is the connect with the Indian fan? But there is a larger connect, an emotional connect, a connect of reach. And so United doing well. Uh, United's health, in a way, it's good for football economy. It's good for uh, generally football in India as such. So with Solskjaer's news coming in, and it was long time pending also, I thought that it will happen after Liverpool or after <laughs> Manchester City. But Yeah, but I guess Watford 4-1, uh, the final sort of proverbial nail in the coffin. Yeah, but when that, when that so if, 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 if you look at football in a, in a neutral perspective, why can't a small club beat a big club? Mm. That question came because if you are looking at giving the coach the right kind of support from behind to work things out, then it has not been there for Solskjaer because he took over the reins of the club. Let's not forget that when the clubs were equally in, in, in I mean, given, given the stature of Manchester United, hmm. relatively in a very bad position. Hmm. And from there, he, he did admirably well. They, they were top four finishers and uh, they reached the uh, European final, the cup final. And uh, so, I mean, that's that's Solskjaer for you also. It, it was not like he came in with a lot of coaching credentials as such. Yeah, he was a great player, and but as a coach, he was not. I mean, he, he was not a proven name. And he came in into the dressing room. He took charge of things. He made things work with with the setup. But then this year, a big change happened, right? Because Manchester United finally started with the base that Solskjaer's era created. They hmm. finally started looking at. Uh, pushing for title, pushing for European presence, mm. I mean, serious European presence. Mm. So, and then they <laughs> got Ronaldo in and uh, Jadon Sancho, and so uh, the way I look at it, going for stars rather than going for a logical building process, which probably, which exactly is what Ferguson did at the start of the Manchester uh, United's 
golden period. Yeah. So class of ninety two yeah, and all of that. Yeah. yeah. So so this I mean even despite the two years of decent running for Rolshire, this was in the making and it just it just so happened that it happened now. It so one thing we should definitely, I think, talk about is how, what, what is the impact of, uh, because this is something you, since you mentioned the context of Indian football, mm -hmm. uh, over the course of the past one year, we've heard of a lot of, uh, from the fans and from various people in, who are involved with the sport, to get rid of the national team head coach, Igor Stimach, mm -hmm. after a series of uninspiring results not bad results mm -mm. but uninspiring uninspiring results and similar uh, to manchester united in that i think fans from the outside are not seeing any progression yeah right so how much is this a coaching decision like a decision to say okay we, we are not heading in the right direction under this coach from a tactical from a footballing standpoint mm -hmm. and how much is a sort of band-aid ki fans na khush hain Mm. Fans are angry, so, and we have to do something to change. Yeah, which is it, or or is it a balanced decision in your opinion? Uh, I, uh, with with Manchester United, I'm not very sure if it's a balanced decision. It 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 takes a knee jerk uh, reaction to what is happening on the field, so results matter. But on a larger sense, team composition is what it's failing failing the coach also because we have had Manchester's defence and midfield. Uh, practically non-existent in those in those defeats that you're talking about and in generally also whatever the good results that have managed to happen also it was not very inspiring performance mm. so uh, removing that coach fine because it has some, some head, heads have to roll when these things happen and uh, yeah, the same thing happened with, in Barcelona as well right so uh, the decision to remove the coach is, is probably in one way, let's forget this season. But in one way, it's it's a, it's a signal that they are trying to probably get a new person with with some kind of vision, which which they can get into the club system. And but for that vision to work, you are bringing in an outsider. For that vision to work, you are working with the exact set of players, uh, executives, <laughs> also. Yeah. Because these are the decision makers yeah. where the money is being spent. Yeah. The decision is made by the board, mm. and so we are. So, I always have this problem that when, when the scapegoat is the coach and when the decisions of player signings, team compositions, the board had a larger say, mm. then, then shouldn't the board and the officials who were in charge of that be held accountable for also. So, if a, uh, a club looking at a larger change should be looking at clearing things wherever the chinks are, mm. regardless of who the who the person is, what the reputation is and mm. all that. And as far as Manchester United's case is concerned, they have gotten Michael Garrigan, who was part of the Solskjaer's uh, team uh, setup, but then already players have started murmuring and there is a bit of a dissent that he is also inexperienced. So mm. inexperienced is key. So when we got, uh, when they got, uh, I shouldn't be saying we, because <laughs> when they got uh, Solskjaer in, uh, it was a temporary spot again. They are getting Michael Carrick in for the temporary spot again. Solskjaer managed it really well initially, so they made him permanent, permanent. but mm. it was still a temporary setup like that. Yeah. Then getting back to the India part of it, ours is not a temporary setup that way. We got Srimash in with the reputation. He was supposed to work things. Uh, towards towards future building things towards future, and so dynamic wise, it's it's an entirely different uh, thing we are talking about. Uh, fans' reaction is entirely different because we are talking about a national team here, yeah, not a, not a club yeah. team. So that's the difference. So yeah, uh, yeah. fair enough. Uh, how is it looking in terms of the future for Manchester United? Things looking going going to look up because. We also have to, I mean, you did mention briefly the impact that uh, these big clubs have. They're essentially mm. like mega corporations, yep. uh, worth hundreds of millions of mm -hmm. uh, dollars, trading yeah. worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and uh, therefore play things of alien forces in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they are going to Villarreal uh, for the Champions League. So it, that match, it's a single match, it's for Carrick's first match. But it also had a lot of bearing, bearing because they win, they qualify for the knockout. So mm. it's 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 hanging in the balance there. Mm. 
and from there it starts. So uh, loose also from there it starts. So mm. we'll have to wait and watch, watch, I guess, which direction the club is taking at this point. Right. But clearly this season is, I would say, uns- I mean, beyond salvage. Mm. And they should be probably planning on a larger sc- uh, the idea of how to how to rebuild the squad itself. Right? Yeah. I mean, and for that you need a man at helm. You mm. get a man at helm. Mm. Get someone like I mean, I would. I mean, you are, you are not. You don't. I mean, if you have that kind of money, you you the world is out there for you to hire, yeah. hire a good man. Except Zinedine Zidane, who has said <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So talking about men at the helm, we are moving on to Rahul Dravid, mm. who's had a good start. Uh, Three nil start. Yeah. against New Zealand after taking over as coach of the Indian cricket team, men's cricket team. Uh, you've been watching some of the cricket. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we are uh, Dravid fans. Yeah. So, so, it brings, for me personally, a little bit of interest back to India cricket. Mm-hmm. Because among the many things that are happening in, in the sporting world, one is that uh, Indian cricketers play like 300 days of cricket, they lose track year. actually. Yeah, how many matches they play? So, of course, there are die-hard fans who watch every game. There are some in our studio who probably watch every time India play. Uh, but for a more, kya hai, lay fan or like not such a hardcore fan, it's harder to follow. There are less narrative storylines, uh, and it's the same bunch of people essentially mm-hmm. doing the same thing again and again and again. Uh, with Dravid coming in and of course Rohit taking over the captaincy of the T20 squad, some of that has changed. We talked about this in brief in the, on the last show. Uh, are you seeing some some like for how's it been for you? Uh, so last night, I mean, in that sense, it's too too early to take that kind of a call, and it's a T20 series we are talking about also. But a trivial whitewash of a team which uh, performed really well at the World Cup World and Cup. just coming up back yeah. off the yeah, I do agree that. Their captain was not there. It was my Mitchell Sandner was leading the side, and a mm. couple of players were also rested. Mm. Uh, but still, uh, so it's it's a bound, uh, bounce back for India, and uh, they were aiming for a bounce back, playing a side which did well at the World Cup. So and we lo- lost to them at the World Cup also. Mm. So in that regard, there was pressure. There was uh, sort of a glare on Rohit Sharma. As well as uh, Rahul Dravid, because uh, it's it's not a make or break series as such, but yeah. it, it 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 is a make series that way. So there is this uh, saying, I mean, uh, a line which I remember now, which is attributed to uh, Salahuddin. <laughs> he says, "What do you gain by winning Jerusalem? Nothing," he said, and then he says also everything. So <laughs> that way. And uh, so, sorry for the digression, but Dravid's. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I saw a picture of Dravid walking in the second match, just before the second match. He was walking beside the pitch. He was saying something to the official, saying, Give me a second, let me just have a look. And that is, and I was taken back to the days of Rahul Dravid as a player where he would, he would meditatively sit in front of the pitch and look at the pitch as though he's trying to listen to what the pitch is saying. Mm. So. Uh, so this pitch reading is actually a myth. Some cricketers themselves say, but it's also it plays in the opposition's mind. Mm-hmm. And you have a cerebral player like Rahul Dravid, who is who is the coach of Indian team, is walking in the middle of the pitch and is looking at it, and he's walking back as though he has learned something out of it. That's it. <laughs> Psychologically, Rohit Sharma has, 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 has a slightly more lesser job to do now. I see. <laughs> That's Trust it. you, Sensei, to <laughs> come up with this. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. so I, I guess Dravid's main difference, I, all due respect to Ravi Shastri and his leadership skill, whatever that he brought onto the table, but Rahul is, is very hands-on and attention to detail. Mm. And it was evident in the whitewash because to win a series against a great side like New Zealand, uh, 3-0, it requires that kind of match-by-match attention to detail, Mm. including the last match where it was, I mean, India won by an overwhelming margin. Mm. And for that to take place, it was not fluke, it was not, I mean, I believe it was not fluke or it was not New Zealand failing, but it was 
understanding the conditions, understanding the due factor that will come into play, mm. winning the toss and going in and batting because that's the best time to bat. Mm. All these factors fell into place. And of course, it was executed also, whatever the plan that was there. Mm. And it's 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 very promising, I, w- I mean, in the sense, the direction that the Indian team could potentially take now with, mm. with, with lead, uh, a leader like Rahul Dravid and uh, and of course, in the t- in the test and ODIs, Virat Kohli would be the sk- skipper. Yeah. So Rahul Rahul will be, will be the common factor across all yeah. three formats. So uh, we could uh, look at we could be seeing a golden period of uh, Indian cricket that way across formats. And I'm very keen and keenly looking at the test series now, yeah. and which will start by the end of the month, mm. where the New Zealand full squad would be there and our uh, the full Indian team well. full squad would be there. Virat Kohli would be back. So I would be. It would be interesting to see how Virat Kohli uh, acts as a skipper with Rahul Dravid mm. working in tandem with Rahul mm. Dravid. And test yeah. is the biggest test. Absolutely. And and I think it's about time. Also, we've spent uh, now four or five years doing sport and news click with very little uh, sort of uh, consistent coverage of cricket. Of cricket. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe this test series yeah. will will start something up. Uh, Get get us non cricket guys for a change to have some cricketing conversations. Uh, finally, a bizarre story, a tragic story from Sonipat. Uh, an unsurprising story in some senses for those who have some understanding of how the wrestling circuit or firmament operates in the north of India and Haryana specifically. In this case, uh, two young trainee wrestlers shot dead by their coach at the academy, uh, their academy in Sonipat. An academy named after perhaps India's most celebrated wrestler, in recent times definitely India's most celebrated wrestler, uh, Sushil Kumar, who himself uh, is in jail jail. uh, in a murder murder case. Um, So Nisha and Suraj, the two young young wrestlers who Mm. died and their mother uh, seriously injured, in what is quite un sort of becomingly termed in India as crimes of passion. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why they need to sort of make this differentiation between kinds of crimes. Uh, it, a murder mm-hmm. is a murder. Murder is a murder, yeah. Um, but it's a complicated case, but one of, uh, I think, fundamentally the coach using his power as a coach uh, to firstly there were allegations by the woman wrestler who, who is no more, uh, who was killed, that there was physical assault, molestation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the coach himself has come out and apparently in preliminary investigations, uh, according to reports, has come out and said that they were in a relationship. She, br- she did not want to be in that relationship and broke it off. And that he couldn't handle it. And this was a reaction to, in that sense, being told, you know, no. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very complex and uh, case, and also we can't. I mean, as far as ca- case investigations go, we all know that the police's in the preliminary investigation and all that, the reports or the stories that they weave in, it's also uh, very ambiguous. Maybe because in the in the, I mean, like how Indian courts and. Mm. The law works. Mm. Everything has to have some kind of. I mean, it has to be proven yeah. for things to happen. Yeah. So, there is a narrative that's been woven by the police. We have the police's version, and all based on uh, confession by the coach, uh, coach, accused coach as mm. well. Uh, so he is probably, I mean, covering his tracks by saying that they were in a relationship, but. Where do we draw that line? We are talking about coach and a student, and yeah. and uh, I mean, and we are talking about wrestling as well. So I mean, a relationship that is celebrated through the ages as a as a and kept on a pedestal, mm. the, the guru, shishya, parampara, and it's all not just broken, but it's also lying in tatters. But that parampara that the wrestling fraternity uh, celebrates, it was always uh, deeply problematic. <laughs> deeply problematic. And uh, uh, this case, or Sushil Kumar's case, where we we do realize that the role of the coach 
as had some bearing in how things transpired, Absolutely. leading into crimes, leading yeah. into this crime or leading yeah. into that crime. And uh, uh, a larger introspection should be done or inspection should be done by the wrestling fraternity. Again, we, we keep saying this over and over when each time a crime happens within the wrestling community, wrestling fraternity. and. Uh, being an being an ex wrestler myself, I have a larger investment in this, mm. uh, the reputation of the sport, because the I feel the sport, despite all the medals and the laurels and the international potential that it has been showing, it's still stuck somewhere. It 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 has hardly shown signs to be cosmopolitan, hardly hardly yeah. broken yeah. into the larger societal acceptance that a sport Absolutely. of I mean, when we are winning internationally. So, wrestling is always associated to antisocial elements, mm. uh, to political muscle, mm. to uh, general gundagardi, gen general gundagardi uh, everything. And it doesn't help when, when a uh, coach who is training in a established, well-established center, taking, brandishing his gun and shooting his students. It doesn't help at all. And uh, it's uh, and the reason behind that that doesn't help either because yeah. you are talking about molestation and uh, I mean harassing the 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 student mm. woman or a nineteen year old uh, nineteen year old yeah. student and so it's it's a very dirty complex case and uh, like I said to comment on that beyond on the case at this point is 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 pointless also because I'm also very unsure what exactly the truth mm. is. Mm. I, I I seriously can't trust f f uh, with the with the reports that are coming out by other police mm. and uh, there might be there might be a larger connection to it. Initially, for instance, there were talks that there is gang violence involved in it also because that that's also a natural assumption that comes with wrestling because yeah. you will never know what the dynamics yeah. happen yeah. Uh, but but it seems so that this is uh, the crime is related to the relationship or the forced relationship that was there between yeah. the coach and the student and it's 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 unfortunate that it is happening and this has happened and also unfortunate that uh, Sushil Kumar's name is uh, it seems forever now it's it will be associated with one crime or the other because mm. he is Still in jail, mm. and uh, his academy is under scrutiny now. I mean, a, a place named after his academy. I, I don't know named whether after him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know whether he has a direct stake yeah. in it or not. And so, uh, how do you clean up this sport? And uh, I don't think the federation officials or the people who run wrestling in this country they they understand the gravity of the situation. They they are stuck in their own dynamic competitions, medals, funding. Whatever the power uh, struggles, struggles, struggles they they play within themselves, and also what they f perceive is the way the way forward for the sport. But mm -hmm. ultimately, medals apart, the reputation of the sport, the well-being of the players, mm -hmm. right from the local level to the higher level, yeah. some kind of structure or discipline is not there, then it falls down. And we understand that in across sport, right? Like why is cricket so celebrated? Because we we don't see cricket as brandishing guns, mm. so and talking about brandishing guns, I just remembered this uh, a, a international wrestler, international medalist who is a police officer. He, uh, at the 2012 nationals in Gonda, Ayodhya, uh, he was there at the venue. He was not competing that year, and in in civil clothes, jeans tight, I mean typical wrestler wear, mm. tight tight t-shirts and a gun popping out from the jeans, brandishing it and walking with pride mm. that this is a gun that I can hold because I'm a police officer. So it's it's a cultural thing. It's mm. I, 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 I hyper-masculine, uh, like yeah. just simmering violence. Exactly. And uh, broad shoulders are not enough when you have a gun to boot, yeah. then yeah. it makes the picture complete. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, that's of course it's it's a it's a tragic tragic story and I can't even imagine for for uh, the family of these two kids who've died uh, what must be uh, going on but but it's something that we we'll I think in the next weeks look at uh, hopefully uh, play things will visit Sonipat and try to get a sense of what's going on because of all the wrestling commentators and pundits in this country which is a very 
large number i think because I, we pride ourselves yeah. as, at having a tradition of wrestling an understanding of wrestling and it's a popular sport across many parts of the country uh, and, and our man here is one of the finest minds at least in terms of understanding the sport uh, and why pe people get involved and why it's such a great sport and therefore contextualizing some of this absolute nonsense that's going on in, uh, outside the pitch yeah. uh, but that will do it for the show today uh, I hope you enjoyed watching playthings of alien forces uh, you, you can check out more of our sports stories on newsclick.in, follow us on social media channels. We'll be back again next week with perhaps some updates on some of these stories, perhaps some new stories uh, from the world of sport. Until then, stay safe. Goodbye. We'll see you again.